All right, hello there. Here's another video today. Uh, my name is Jonah Reynolds with Pangea Design Build. We design and build sustainable off-grid buildings. And today, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about affordable housing. Uh, affordable housing is defined as uh, not more than 30% of your income going towards your house. So there's a lot of things involved in that. Uh, there's rent, there's utilities, right? There's taxes. Some people even get to have trash service. Uh, there's insurance. <clears throat> there's maintenance, right? There's just a lot of things with the house. It's one of the biggest purchases and things that, that somebody does. Uh, and so, you know, 30% is a federal guideline. That's what they say. If you can, if all the costs of a house are 30% uh, or less than what your total income is, then that house, according to the feds, is called affordable housing. Now, that's not very realistic. Uh, um, so first of all, that 30% usually is rent and, and utilities. So there's more, there's more costs and fees and time that goes into, uh, taking care of and maintaining the house. And so this is whether it's, uh, buying a house or whether it is renting a house. So, you know, you can just do the calculations on, you know, if you make 50 grand a year, 30% of that, uh, what's that, like 15 grand or so? Uh, 15 grand for someone that's making 50 grand a year. And that's the federal guidelines. Uh, it's not... It's not doable. Uh, here in Taos, <clears throat> rent, is, rent is rough. All the nightly rentals put the monthly rates up. <clears throat> and that hurts. Uh, that hurts a lot of people around town here. And, you know, we, we work with clients around the country, around the world, and uh, there's a lot of consistent efforts to do some type of a development, either focusing on getting people off the streets with those types of housing, which we've done designs for, and we're looking at 3D printing to really maximize the situation, to get the, the most amount of doors for the, for the buck. Uh, and, and so, you know, we're doing master plans, we're doing concepts, we're doing drawings and designs for these various goals, right? Sometimes it is to get people off the streets. Sometimes it's just low income housing. Sometimes it's just affordable housing. There's all these different levels of where some of these projects are intending to hit their mark, right? The, the, the specific solution that they're trying to do. Uh, you know, we, we kind of believe that, that a rising tide raises all ships. So, so, start at I don't want to say bottom but that explains it you know at, at the housing geared toward getting people off the streets uh, <clears throat> Pangea design build is all about affordable housing we basically put everything we do gets into uh, into that the research the figuring things out the money uh, the labor, the materials, all of those things goes into affordable housing. So when we're doing a, a project and, and we want to throw away less so we can maybe save some of that for an affordable housing project. So there's these various solutions and we're, we're pretty much focused on, on the unit that is all about getting people off the streets start there so for example in taos county or portland maine or san diego or whatever it is uh what is a rent that people can can handle right it's 
insanely traumatic and stressful and on and on when you don't have a home, when you don't have a house, when you don't have your own room, you don't have your own space, your own bed. And so it's not just, <clears throat> you know, people are not, it's not like, uh, oh, I need a bed, I need a couch, I need a place to stay, and if I get it, it's going to be all good, right? It's, it's, uh, 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 there's this human component, this emotional component, right, that, that has to be considered when we're looking at affordable housing. So what's the rent? Well, when you run the numbers and, and, and look at the design, the goal, the goal is $500 a month rent on a unit that's basically the size of a hotel room that we can build for about 72 grand. So obviously when you do that in volume, those numbers go down and you know the the rent can go down because the cost goes down uh, and so someone who has fifteen thousand dollars a year to put into their housing that starts to look doable but it's really not just getting a piece of land and throwing up some houses there's there's human resources components that need to go into that especially when you're doing housing to get people off the streets, right? We have to grow food, there has to be a medical component, there has to be, you know, some type of a counseling type component um, um, as we set up a situation for, for people not just to have shelter, but to uh, thrive in what they feel most passionate about, basically, you know, what, what, their, what their job type thing is. Uh, not assuming that it's a typical nine to five thing. Um, you know, that's also known as the rat race. And when we're doing sustainable uh, uh, development, basically, for affordable housing, we need to look at that. Um, is that a sustainable and realistic thing in this whole nine to five uh, uh, process and setup that society has set up. Uh, does it have to be that way? Are there other ways for people to make ends meet and for society to function? Right? This this crazy this crazy you know work thing where it's it's driving after the money and everything else comes from that. That has to change. So without getting into economics and all that and staying on affordable housing. Uh, <clears throat> setting up a situation so that, you know, 30% uh, uh, of someone's income that's making 50 um, uh, that's not that's not doable. There's a lot of people in this town here and across the country here in America that are making 50 and 60 and, and, and 45 and everything. 30% uh, of that, they can't afford 30% of that. Uh, so, uh, I don't really think the answer is in subsidies either. Uh, those are just band-aids that are going to fall right off real fast uh, and really make the wound worse. Uh, we need to actually have a solution and not just a uh, a kick the can down the road type thing. Uh, that's what subsidies basically do. So if the building and the, in the development is actually affordable, uh, and you know, keep in mind, these targets that we have and we have designs for and we're gonna be building some this year and next year and on and on is uh, $500 a month. And we build them fast, and they're out of local recycled materials. And we have our academy that builds with that builds with us for them, which which greatly helps. And we get to teach and all that, which is very important in uh, an affordable housing development, because uh, we can train people in green jobs and green methods. And I use that word loosely, green. Uh, you know, sustainable, environmental, off-grid things, uh, skills and experiences. Uh, 
uh, <clears throat> and then you know six months later uh, they're skilled with experience that not only us but other firms would want to hire so these buildings are five hundred dollars a month right this is the design that is geared toward getting people off the streets but there are no utility bills these buildings are completely off grid they're gonna, always going to stay comfortable inside you know cool in the summer warm in the winter no matter what the climate is so that is a fundamental shift when you're in a building in a home and you know we can do uh, uh, commercial buildings for business it's the same thing about how this affects the work environment but you have a building that takes care of you that's always going to be there it's never going to freeze it's, never, it's not going to run out of things um, and knowing that that you have that in your life uh, which I guess is kind of like being in love uh, it just changes everything about about us as a as a conscious living being um, having that in our lives um, just opens up so many amazing possibilities with everybody with humanity on, on the big scale and us individually on you know just on the individual scale uh, so that's a big thing not only is it affordable but these things are off-grid and they work well and they take care of you this is this is 50 years of, of uh, experience around the world designing and building these uh, that that uh, Mike Reynolds my father started um, and so yeah it's a it's a it's a super powerful thing uh, it's not just about that rent right it's about being in a in a building in a situation which again is similar to love now that I think about it and how that affects your life when you have this sustainable off-grid thing that's taking care of you so it's a realistic solution to get people off the streets. It's a it's a decent price point, I think. Uh, yes, I want to drive it lower. Ultimately, when you're getting into volume, like hundreds of doors, that 500 rent can go a, a month can go down. And then especially if you do a community where uh, you have different density levels, right? You have affordable over here. You know, a spectrum of of uh, of um, buildings with different price points and there's nothing wrong with high-end buildings nothing wrong at all uh you know definitely to each his own absolutely and and uh but when you're doing these mcmansion things out of frame like no mm -mm. don't don't even don't even talk to me i can't relate to that it's it's just totally bonkers and insane uh but when you're doing you know a 10,000 square foot or a super high-end 4,000 square foot or whatever but it's sustainable and off-grid then yeah okay that's that's good you know who, who am I to say what size house and all that it should be but uh, we do need to do things that are righteous and responsible and thoughtful and buildings that that suck the fossil fuels and and uh, that don't take care of the people and that are weak and rot and burn and all these things which are frame housing uh, that that's just it's a non-starter it's, it's it's totally unrealistic on so many levels <clears throat> so you know comparing a sustainable off-grid building to a conventional building especially a frame thing uh, it is kind of apples and oranges, right? One is off-grid. It's totally different. Uh, it's going to last generations as opposed to a frame thing. Uh, but we're talking about affordable housing today. And the comparison is, all right, well, what's the cost per square foot? Yes, sustainable off-grid buildings cost more. Not a whole lot more, but a little more. But we're, we're making moves on that to, to get them at the same price points. Uh, but sustainable off-grid buildings have no utility bills or little to no, right? There's different levels of being off-grid. 
So then you, then, then you start looking at the true cost of things, right? Local materials, that's less costly for that job budget as well as society in general, you know, because less embodied energy, which means it takes less fuel to get it to the job site. Uh, and, you know, we, we use recycled materials as much as we can, but it's, it's not a, a, a gigantic, crazy amount of materials compared to new materials that go into a building. Uh, but you just look at the true cost of things, and when you're looking at hundreds of thousands, if not millions of a certain type of thing, whether it's a vehicle or, you know, some, some consumer product, or a house, that's going to have serious effects on the environment and the planet and society and the way we do things. Uh, and uh, so the true cost to the planet and society on conventional stick frame fossil fuel stuff uh, is harsh. Not to mention on the human psyche, it's harsh. Uh, having to pay utilities having to pay for water, having to pay for power, when there's this crazy, bonkers, giant power plant in the sky, where everyone can have power for free, easy, and probably has had in the ancient past. Uh, so all that thing just doesn't make sense. And then you, you look, you compare the true cost, and then you look at community development of sustainable off-grid buildings and maybe someday we'll get into looking at hundreds of thousands of sustainable off-grid buildings happening no one organization can do that so one of our biggest missions is to spread this knowledge as far and wide as possible uh, for basic basically for free right now we can't do it for free because it's a business but we're scaling in volume and that's where all of our prices drop uh, most of them uh, so when you're looking at that then the cost to society of sustainable off-grid buildings in mass is not does not hold things back it actually enhances things uh, uh, it 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 increases the psychological and the physiological uh, uh, quality for humanity uh, and so you put that together with with uh, uh, you know affordable housing and it, and it really just changes the game and so it's basically looking at there shouldn't be a reason why there are homeless people there shouldn't be a reason why people can't afford rent and utilities because if we provide it's never about the people it's never in your business in your life it's never the person it's the process it's 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 this fabric of society that we're that we're all stuck in um it's not the people so so when we fix the process and when we have more appropriate buildings that we exist in uh, um, it fundamentally changes things and it makes it make it creates a situation where everyone can be in a house with all these you know water power wastewater treatment all these things food a little bit of food production or hopefully a lot and that is for everybody uh, so that's affordable housing, uh, and and it is critical that developers, regulations, codes, um, uh, construction companies, architects, uh, make sure that at least a good-sized part of their endeavors is about affordable housing. Uh, that's just critical because uh, we can't keep going down this road of throwing up this frame nonsense it just traps and ensnares people and it's irresponsible I don't want to sound like I'm 
you know, on my high horse or whatever, talking shit about other designs and things. I don't mean to do that. But look around. Uh, we have some issues on this planet with the buildings, let alone other things. Uh, so we really do need to make the shift. And uh, it starts with affordable housing. Thank you.